unfolding of events in Ukraine that are relevant for Africans. The full responsibility for the dangerous crisis unfolding in Ukraine has its genesis in the illegal policies of the U.S., EU, NATO axis of domination beginning in 2014. As the Black Alliance for Peace reported, it was clear even from statements attributed to Obama officials that during the latter part of 2013 until February 2014, the Obama-Biden administration gave material support and encouragement to anti-democratic right-wing elements in Ukraine to execute regime change. Therefore, the U.S. was deeply implicated in the coup of February 2014 that overthrew the democratically elected president of Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych. By the way, the LA Times has a, an article on how the CIA was meddling in Ukrainian politics. So this isn't some conspiracy theory. No. And, and that's why on this show we've been covering, I've been calling out the people who are purposely leaving that out. Because if you if you share that part, your bullshit about fighting for sovereignty falls apart. So that's why I am letting you guys know the people who are getting the story wrong, we got to start doubting their intentions at this point. Because yeah. They are doing it on purpose because they, if they tell you that they're supporting the side that stripped the sovereignty of the country, that alone destroys their talking point. So that, they don't do it. And that is what the article is saying here. That's why they say you got to bring this up. But go ahead, yes. Missy, do you want to add it to that? No, I just, I, there's, again, there's just so much historical context being left out of all of these conversations. People are acting like what's happening right now is happening in a vacuum and that there was nothing preceding it and that we don't have it. You know what I mean? And it's, and it, again, otherwise intelligent human beings. So like Nick said, we have to start questioning people's intentions here because um, the information's out there. It's readily available. And anybody with any degree of, um, you know, global knowledge, I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even that smart, you guys. And I figured it out. So I know somebody like Marianne Williamson or somebody like Stephen Donzinger or something, you know what I mean? Like these people people know they have uh, the at least the ability to know. So either they're just incredibly propagandized and slightly naive, or this is an intentional thing where they're pushing along, a, a, you know, a, a, a propaganda. And it, it's, it, it's really troubling. It's what's happening right now is really, it's really depressing. This whole week has been really, really depressing. Seriously. Yeah. yeah so this gets into right. some of that context. So number two, the coup government was infected with Ukrainian ultra nationalists and with political ties to literal fascists such as the right sector and the Azov battalions. The coup plunged Ukraine into crisis because substantial sectors of Ukrainian society did not support it, especially sections of predominantly Russian-speaking Ukrainian citizens in eastern portions of the nation. Those Ukrainian citizens rejected the legitimacy of the coup government and began to voice support for independence from the neo-Nazi government that took power. The response from the illegal coup regime was to label its own citizens terrorists and attack the eastern portions of the country militarily, a war crime. In other words, they attacked their own citizens, a crime that the Obama administration pretended was the excuse for U.S. subversion in Syria. They never mentioned this. And when they talk about the bad separatists, you know, the when, when you had people that were cheering in eastern Ukraine, and I was looking for a lot of sources because I didn't want to be misled on this, but when Putin declared independence for those regions, a lot of people were celebrating because they were part of the Ukrainians who did not support the coups. And and then and people when, when people talk about this this crisis, they never explain the mindset of the separatists. Yeah. And they do that on purpose. That is the message I want you guys to take from the channel. Because if you understand this stuff, you will see NATO propaganda and you, like me and Comrade Missy has been, go crazy. Yeah. When I see when I see anti-fascists take the side of fascists who overthrew a democratically elected government. Yes. So my tolerance is done. Yeah, let's go three. Let's my tolerance three. has been right. done. You've been very patient, my friend. Yeah, I have. <laughs> you have been very patient. I still have been. People still think I'm unreasonable, too. Still, people still think it's we're- It's revolutionary discipline. Yeah, people still think we're the toxic ones on Revolutionary Black. Oh my God, you call now to seize the house street? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the, number three, you want to read? You want to go into that, Zoya? Yeah, the Azov Battalion played a major combat role in the attacks by the coup government against Ukrainian citizens who opposed the coup. The Azov Battalion is avowedly partially pro-Nazi, as evidenced by its regalia slogans and problematic. Pro programmatic statements and as well documented as such by several international monitoring organizations. 
The Azov Battalion was incorporated into the National Guards of Ukraine, the armed forces of the Ukrainian state and today is reported to be being training by U.S. Special Forces. So glad that's just got brought up. Thank you. Oh, yes. yes. This article hits everything. Yes. And number four, after, after suffering military defeats at the hands of the peoples in eastern Ukraine that had subsequently declared themselves independent of the coup government, an agreement between Donbass and the coup government was arrived at that became known as the Minsk, Minsk Agreement. Terms of the agreement included a commitment to a ceasefire along with relative autonomy for Donbass, eastern Ukraine. The agreement avoided all-out war and provided a degree of stability until the Biden administration came back to power. Back in power, Biden and the Democrats, who have now reclaimed the mantle of the party of war, began to encourage Ukraine, uh, Ukraine authorities to ignore the Minsk agreement and to forcefully retake control of Donbass. Even more dangerously, the U.S. and some European powers began to indicate that Ukraine might be invited to become a member of NATO. If Ukraine becomes a member of NATO, this could allow a nuclear-armed NATO to be positioned right on the borders of Russia. Russia is rightly concerned about the security risk at its border. So whatever you think of Putin, you can dislike Putin. You can criticize Putin. I criticize Putin. He's a billionaire. He's not. Uh, he's anti-communist. This is not about a pro-Russia or pro-Putin perspective. This is just no. about the objective truth. You yeah, know, and this goes really deep. Go ahead. This go ahead. Goes, I just want to bring this. This goes really deep too. Um, we uh, we've talked to Moss Robs or Robson on our show many times, who um, uh, focuses a lot on the Ukrainian diaspora, and he has um, there's the the links between the Joe Biden administration and um, literal Nazi elements within Ukraine um, and the Banderites and all of that stuff. I mean, it really does run really deep. Like this is there are really strong through lines through all of these. It's a big club. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a big club. Uh, so, I mean, I highly recommend people looking into that, looking into the Banderites, looking into Stephen Bandera. I mean, all of these things are, um, again, it, you need the context. You can't just look at these things as if they're taking place in this vacuum. It's That's not what's happening here. These it, There's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of detail. There's a lot of moving parts. And this has been going on for a very long time. Um, so, and I, again, I'm no expert. I don't pretend to be. Um, but people who are out here just like surface level thinking this, it, that's really dangerous. Well said. So I'm going to read the next part of the article because I love this part. Thank you for giving me a break there, Zoya, because this part is All amazing. Right. And, this one, and we had to cover this part for Revolutionary Blackout, right? So the Black radical position on the situation in Ukraine, not going to get this at breaking points. <laughs> NATO, Dude, I almost snorted Hitler. my Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> NATO is an illegitimate, aggressive structure in service of Western imperialism and does not deserve any support from African, Black, or any colonized people. Say it with your chest, man. Now, I love how you bowed that part, too. He knew, <laughs> knew they killed him with that line. Did you say this is a Jammu? Is this a Jammu Baraka? I don't think this, this is not Jammu. I think no. is this is the group as, as a whole that put this oh, okay. out. I don't see an author here. Yeah, I, I don't know, know. Okay. I know a who wrote this one, and I want to go. I want to go through this, but I may say this for another stream because we. I think this is. This, I think I may do this for a whole another stream because this is a, this is what a Jammu wrote. And I'll just read the title because I actually did decide I'll say this for next time. So Ukraine, what does it have to do with black folks? <laughs> we should we should be anti NATO. Any black person. I see cheering for NATO. I am seeing someone whose mind has been colonized and destroyed by propaganda. Or they, or they choose the oppressor because that happens. W.B. Du Bois wrote about it. The Negro that chooses the side of the oppressor because they see that as their path to liberation, which, to be fair, is a successful path under neoliberal capitalism, as Colin Powell described himself. Colin Powell himself said the best way, if you're black, to uplift yourself in this society is to join the police or the military. So that's the only people that I see support. Like you're a traitor or your mind is colonized. But anyway, let's let's move on to I'll finish this part here. Mo moreover, all social forces committed to peace should demand that NATO be dismantled. <laughs> God damn, this, I love this article. The Ukrainian crisis is yet another example of delusional policies being pursued by US ruler rulers unable to accept the change in circumstances in the world today that limit their ability to oppose their interests on peoples and nations without consequence. And then I asked you guys that question on Tuesday. 
Why the hell would anyone still support NATO being an organization? <laughs> Especially if you're a leftist. Like, what, what? I want someone to write down the explicit goals of NATO and how that works the, and how that helps the global poor and colonize people. I would love to see it. Last paragraph here. Um, as an African people involved in an existential battle in the U.S. against rightist forces from the Trump Republican supporters to warmongering neoliberal Democrats, we're both committed. We're both committed to global full spectrum dominance. They already explained that concept earlier on the in the article. It will be a front to our history and the people to enter the struggle on the side of empire and NATO. I repeat, it will be an affront to our history and our people to enter this struggle on the side of empire and NATO. So uh we get those are, these are the debate. I guess I'll read these, no reason not to, right? Um but these are this this, this article was uh, released in January, so this was already. You see how the, the our demands, their demands, I should say, was put in place to prevent conflict, right? Yeah. They they didn't care about that. But maybe, who, so we about to chime in. No, no, no. I was okay, just scoffing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Instead of the arbitrary and legal activities of the United States and NATO, the Ukrainian situation should be moved to the United States Security Council, the only body by. Air, the only body by international law tasked with the responsibility to address international threats to peace. This is the same council. I, st- I actually did a, st- a study on this. Um, I'll try to make sure I got this right. I hope I don't mis- misspeak here, right? But I think this is the same council that looked into police violence, right? And said that police violence is a crime against humanity, like police violence against black Americans. I hope I didn't misspeak. I got to look into that. I think that's the same council, right? Um... Number three, the NATO that NATO as a structure for advancing the interests of white supremacy in the U.S. empire must be dismantled. Yep, <laughs> that's definitely the, the anti-imperialist position. And anyone who calls himself an anti-imperialist, who is honestly too pussy to say that, stop giving them credibility. 